Hey, Peter, great to see you. Nick, I, honestly, I thought you were going to be online. So it's good you guys are together. That's awesome. Yeah, and socially distanced. I feel gang. Sort of. I feel like you're ganging up on me. So uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. Great to see you both. Uh, um, so yeah, so uh, Peter, which which wine do you want to start off with then? Look, I think I think we'll go with three eight nine uh, for many reasons, but the most important one for us symbolically this year, James. This is. In 2020, we're looking at the 60th anniversary year of BIN 389. And I guess, you know, if we were, Nick can correct me here, but I don't think he will. I think this is a wine that people in Australia have grown up with generationally. Yeah. People know, understand, uh, seller. Um, I think even last year still, it was officially the most sellered red wine in Australia officially, wow. BIN 389. It's a, and it's a real study too. I think if you if you sort of if you follow you know if you, or if you go back and trace three eight nine, um, you know through even just the last three or four decades, you can. It really is a wine that says a lot about how the Penfolds brand has evolved and and and, and it, you know represents that journey um, as a absolutely as a wine. yeah. And for us, it's it's one we put our hat on because we have increased volumes of this over the years, and we've always been aware of the old you know stretching the blend type of philosophy. This is the antithesis. Many would say that 389 has never looked better, albeit it now is for a global market. Um, it's never changed the stylistic template since day one. It's always Cabernet Shiraz, Cabernet predominant. This vintage, I have to look up my notes, 57% Cabernet, 43% Shiraz. I don't have to look up my notes. It's always matured in uh, Quercus Alba, American Oak. Uh, I do, again, though, have to look up my notes because this year we're looking at 38% new. It's usually around 30 35%. It's, it's pretty strong. I think the, the 2018 vintage um, seems to, you know, through this, I guess this is really the, the heart, you know, the, in, in the sort of middle um, mm. section of the Penfolds range. Um, it seems like, for me, um, that 2018 looks very composed, very complete, very sort of seamless. Is that, mm -hmm. is that a character you would say is a, a, a sign across, of the whole vintage? It's across 18, yeah. The, the, it's, it's not, nothing pokes out, um, even in the context of other ones, we're using the term harmonious. Uh, sheen, gloss, call it what you will. There's a polish to the wines. Um, certainly a significant thrust to them. They're powerful wines. But they're just so gentle and relaxed, and I think, as a generalization, they're relaxed. Yeah, yeah. But there's also a nice tannin te texture to it. You have some mm. beautiful fruit. I wouldn't even, I didn't want to even call it ripe. Like it, it's it's mature fruit, but it's really showing this balance and freshness. And I think Nick, you've been a big fan of eighteen all over Australia for that. Yeah, it's um, it's um, you know, it's reminding me. You know, I've sort of been um. Been looking at some of the things you've been saying um, about uh, about some of the, the Tuscan 17s just in the last little while, and yeah. these 28 things have that same. It's it's this power and concentration, but but tempered with this real freshness. Okay. That seems to be a real a real sign of the vintage. And and this this is it, it, always an interesting wine, being the blend of Cabernet and Shiraz. I think um, you know there's a there's a temptation to sort of go looking to see which one is. Is, is doing what or what roles are they playing? And here it really seems, you know, although Cabernet is dominant, it feels like there's a there's a sort of a fleshy core of Shiraz fruit, but the fabric of the wine is Cabernet and it's those tannins, James, I think, have that lovely sort of, you know, um, sort of fabric-like weave of, of great, you know, great Cabernet tannin. What region do you think gave you that fresh acidity, that freshness to it? I would say probably the southeast because of heat down there and problems with uh, flowering and also the raison. And, you know, a problem becomes a positive a bit later in the season. Uh, it was a, a relatively later harvest down there when compared to Barossa and McLaren Vale. So there's a good retention of acidity. And, yes, there's that lovely brightness to the wine. Yeah. And as Nick mentioned earlier, I think the Cabernet is the driver of that brightness and freshness. Mm. The Shiraz, the underpinning, the richness. And, and this will transform over the years. You know, this is a wine not even yet released. Uh, we're currently drinking and pouring here in this restaurant. The 1990s, a 30-year-old, and guess what? It's still fresh. The 1990 is still fresh. When will this be on the market then? 
Uh, August the 6th, this will be released globally across all markets in the world. I'm very impressed with the uh, drinkability. It's so delicious now. Yeah. You know, it's, and that's really, for me, impressive where you, it's not, there's no, there's, everything is in the right place. There's, it's all in balance and harmony. Should we taste the 16? Oh, if we have to. In the, in the meantime, <laughs> because it's we're two years away from that. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, uh, the 16 Grange is a wine we've been looking forward to for some time. And on the back of, you know, if ever you release a special bin, and, of course, we released the 111A uh, only last year from 16, and we always use that as an indicator. In a year where a special bin wine is released, watch out for the Grange of that year. And we've been awaiting the release of 16. Not to say that we weren't just a little bit trepidant on the success of the 15. Uh, you know, sometimes you have shadow effects or whatever, but this is altogether different, the 16 Grange to the 15. And we were talking earlier, Nick, about the blackness and the forbidding nature of the 15. It almost pushed you away a little bit. This one beckons you in. This one Come and share, come and, and you know, this is like the 10. We, we, we align this with the 10 Grange, uh, which we love, and it's going to be a little bit of a toss-up, I think. Time will tell uh, which one ascends to a greater height. That's really something that knows. Yeah. And only 3% Cabernet in this release, um, which is about average, you know, 2 to 4% is the average. Um, there have been a number with zero. There have been one or two at 13 or 14. But uh, the 3% Cabernet really is there by default because it's Grange, it's not Cabernet. And uh, everything else about the wine, the use of oak, the time in oak is pretty much standard, if I can use that word in the context of this sort of wine. Also, that structurally, it's a little bit different than some Granges where it's less like, let's say, like this big cylinder square of fruit. It really has an elegance and finesse to it yes. even though you in the core the center you get all this um structure and richness but it, there's something sort of just fluid around the whole thing mm. yes you know i'm saying like you could easily drink it I don't, you yeah. know yeah it, oh absolutely absolutely uh this bottle we have here we deliberately didn't double decant it which will sort of toughen it up a bit uh yeah. this is straight out of the bottle but a bit like the 2010, to your point, it just sort of this lovely wave that just rides right yeah. across the palate. There's no sort of, you know, tumultuous anything. It's oh. just this steady, confident push across the palate. And the aromatics are everything grain should be. You know, there's a little bit of the formic, a little bit of the VA. The yeah. characters we've seen in recent ones, a little bit of soy, a little bit of hoisin, a little bit of aniseed. Um, it's sort of tar and the little, little coal smoke. Sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay. So now we're going to probably struggle getting the wax off the top of G4, James. So you can't laugh at me as I struggle. We might need a blade too, James. No if that's okay. I'll give this a go, but I don't think it will work. It might. But actually, it might work. Oh, oh. me of little faith. It's the first time I've done that. This is the first, this is a world first. Um, so I didn't even know if that would work. It has. That worked pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, now, we will need a corkscrew though, James. So this anyway. Is, this okay. is also, James, this is the first um, the first showing of 16 Grange or any of the Pempold's wines is, is the tasting this morning as well. How many, is it the, how, what's the production this time of the, uh, Only 2,500 bottles for the world. 2,500 bottles. And how much was the, how many bottles uh, were G3? made? G3? Yeah. Yeah, uh, G3 that are 1,200 bottles. And we've been able, because there's an extra vintage. Uh, I was saying to Nick earlier too, uh, James, the lovely thing about this series, there are only three wines, G3, G4, and I can with a, a little bit of relief now say G5 is bottled. <laughs> so that's all there will ever be. So from a collection perspective, from a rarity perspective, not that we're trying to induce yeah. rarity here, but to be fair to collectors, there won't be like a G10 or because then you've, you've got a Solera in effect. What a shame you won't continue it because it's actually a, um, an excellent concept, just like the um, the Reserva Special for um, 
for our yes. bank of Cecilia. Well, when I say we won't continue it, not as a G series to this proposition, uh, multi vintage, whatever. Uh, as you know, now we're, we're making champagne with a champagne house yeah. and we are able to do things there, of course. But it's not to preclude doing something of this nature again, but not in this series and not okay. to this style. Okay. It's the same with the Ampule. You know, our, our current yeah. um, colleagues in the business would like us to do that again. And I said, well, we launched that at the Baccarat Club in Moscow and the collectors paid a lot of money for those Ampules. We've, in effect, created Venice time capsules. Not one yet has been opened around the world. Oh, really? And we're hoping they're not open for three, four, five hundred years. That was the whole idea of that continuum. The aroma is amazing. Yeah, and it really needs some air. There is just so much happening. In that so good. Wow. Wow. We've just let the genie out of the bottle, literally. Uh, you know, we love G3, but our – and I've only looked at a couple of bottles since it was bottled – so this is not the first bottle I've tasted, but, yeah, it's another level away from G3 again, I think. And when you look at it, you know, the vintages 2, 4, 8 and 16, they're the best vintages we've made in the new millennium. It has so much floral character. Doesn't adjust, yeah. And, again, yeah. freshness. <laughs> You're considering there are Granger's in here going back 18 years and it's as fresh as a 16 almost, and it has 16 in it, yeah. But it's much more, uh, I would say, like crushed berries and flowers than like tar or any of those spices, just pure fruit. Mm. It goes every which way, you know. You know if you to draw one of those charts of what it does across the yeah. palate, you need a three-dimensional array of... It's such a beautiful wine to drink now, but at the same time, you, you can, there's... Uh, a, a real reserve to it. There's a lot, you know, underneath it all. We live in dark times at the moment, and I think this, for a lot of people, is going to be a lovely source of illumination, a, a real beacon. Um, I agree. Certainly, you know, Penfold collectors have been waiting for it, but I think this will certainly shake the tree for people who haven't yet ventured near these sorts of wines. They're going to go to them, and it will be an awakening. What's so great about Australia, and this wine uh, <laughs> h highlights it at the very, very summit of quality but australia you know a huge wine continent is really making nick and i have said for a while um some of the most pristine drinkable wines on earth right now it's all about incredible drinkability harmony and wines full of character and congratulations that's a that's the, the summit it's yeah. great no no hey guys and it Thanks, doesn't stand guys. still Onward and upward. Okay. Yeah. Have a good, have a good you, lunch. I, I hate you guys for that. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day. Okay. Cheers. Stay Thank warm. You. Cheerio. Goodbye. Bye.